Hey guys, so today we are going to be trying out a brand new beauty brand from the drugstore. If you guys are curious to see what brand it is, how much they cost, what they offer, and how they apply, then just keep watching. Okay, so excuse the hair today, it just wasn't cooperating, so this is what we're getting. So I didn't want to start my video with bare face, I wanted to just kind of leave the makeup I had on earlier today, so I'm going to go wash it off and we'll be back to dive right into the brand new beauty line. I am so excited. Okay, so I have in front of me almost all of the collection. I didn't grab everything because honestly I'm not made of money, um, but they have adorable packaging like this, this satin liquid lipstick looks like a little bow on top and this gold packaging so so cute. Their lipsticks look like this. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the brand is called Joa Cosmetics. They are a Korean inspired beauty line and they're at the drugstore so they are affordable. So through doing some research, I found out that Joa actually is Korean for I like it and they want you to like their makeup as well. So we'll see if I like it today. So I picked up a handful of things from their line. So let me tell you what they are. First off, I have this really cute packaging, um, Truly Yours Natural Finish Foundation. It's a dropper and it says Inspired by K-Beauty on it. The foundation was $9.19, glass bottle, little dropper top, like that. And I picked up the shade Classic Ivory. It looks like it will be a pretty good match for me. They had two different concealers. One was like a full cover squeezy tube. And then this one is their Truly Yours Dark Circle Corrector, which is what I picked up because I have dark circles. That's no big secret. This concealer is $8.19. I picked up two of their powders. They come in three shades. They come in Translucent, Peach, and Banana. I did not pick up the banana because I haven't had much luck with that. But I picked up the peach because I thought that it might give me like a nice glow. It didn't actually look that far off from my skin tone, so I wanted to see how these two work. These setting powders are $9.19 a piece. They had three different brow products. I picked the Brow Down To Me Brow Pencil and Gel combination. This one I believe was like $10. Yeah, this one was $10.29. This is one of the most expensive things that I came across on the display. Their mascara, I got this Eye Scream Volume and Length Mascara. The packaging's adorable. Reminds me of like something you'd find in Paris. This mascara was $8.19. These are all US dollar prices. Their I'm So Fly Liner, which is their felt tip liquid eyeliner. Again, the packaging is adorable. And this one was $8.19. I'm sensing a trend here. Their matte liquid lipstick called What A Matte. I got the shade Cupcake, this one is $7.19. And finally, I picked up their Infinite Kiss Satin Liquid Lipstick. The one that's just adorable, I couldn't pass it up. And this one is $6.19. I think this was the cheapest thing that I found at the line and the Brow Duo was the most expensive. So between $6.19 and $10.19, and or $10.29. That seems to be the price range for the products that I came across. So I have my Maybelline Face Studio sponge ready to go. So let's dive right into trying these products. And I had to change my setup a little bit. So now you guys are looking at my divider instead of my makeup because the sun always comes down right here and it was throwing off my lighting. So I had to kind of move things around for filming during this time of year. So that's why it looks different. Haven't moved, still in the same house. We'll see for how long, but uh, still here. All right, so let's give this a good shake. Let's see, claims on here are none. And it does say that this is a Kiss brand. So this is by Kiss Beauty. And I believe Ruby Kisses is also by Kiss Beauty. So they make some products that I enjoy. I'm just gonna drop it on my face and hope for the best here. Ah. Okay, that's a lot lighter than I expected. It just drops them on the sponge. It's a very humid day out, which is why my curls are not staying down. My hair is just, whew, doing its own thing today. Well, that looks beautiful. Maybe not quite the right shade for me, but it went on smoothly, went on evenly. Let's try the other side with my Sephora buffing brush.
All right, so this is on bare skin. I didn't moisturize or prime at all because I wanted to see how this foundation works just on bare skin without anything else working for it or against it. Okay, so looking up close, it's not doing anything for my pores, that's for sure. I feel like I'm already seeing the definition of the lines on my forehead from doing this. So it's already starting to settle into that. It looks fine. Like right now, it gives me like this healthy glow look, but we're not done yet. I would say that it is a... I would say a medium to full foundation, a medium to full coverage foundation. I don't know what it's advertised as being as I've never even heard of this brand before walking into CVS and seeing this display. So I had to give it a try, but here is Classic Ivory on my skin. It feels nice. The packaging is, I mean, Fancy feeling, it's glass with the dropper and gold. So, so far, very fancy look. Let's, next, let's check out this Truly Yours Dark Circle Concealer. I picked up the shade Porcelain because I like my under eyes to be bright. Um, it just says inspired by K-Beauty. Nothing really else, let's see here. There's the color, oh, that's very light, okay. I'm gonna to try to blend it in with a sponge and then on the other side I'll try this tool. Okay, now let's try to blend it in with this sponge. I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, but we'll try. Instead of blending out, it's just like applying more and more product, so maybe not. The concealer seems to be nice and bright and almost smoothing, like the areas where I had some pore problems right here with the foundation. This seemed to kind of smooth out the pores in that area. So I would say that this is like a smoothing concealer, which is nice. Um, did it cover the blue? Not really. Let me try another layer here. Okay, so nice and bright. So next up, we have the two setting powders. We have the Selfie Ready Setting Powder in Translucent and the Selfie Ready Setting Powder in Peach. So I think I want to check both these out, swatch them, see what they look like outside of the package. They've got this kind of like twist over top so that when you're done, you don't get powder everywhere so you can close it. All right, so here is Peach right there. Still looks pretty bright. That might, that might actually work to brighten. <laughs> And then here is translucent. All right, so peach seems like it remains like a light peach shade. And translucent is translucent. So let's give these a try. I wanna try the peach under my eye, but I don't want it to affect the color of the foundation. So I'm going to try one eye with the peach and one eye with the translucent and see how they work. All right, so I have a little bit of the translucent powder right here. Try the translucent on this side. I'm just gonna do the whole side of the face with the translucent powder. Okay, so this side has been set with the translucent powder. It does truly seem to be translucent. It doesn't seem to be affecting the coverage at all. My skin looks nice and smooth. Um, I don't really see like a white film at all. So far it feels quite nice actually. So I like that. Let's head on over. Now let's check out the peach side. And I'm just going to use a big fluffy wet n wild brush. Okay, 
right? So this is the side with the translucent powder. This is the side with the peach setting powder. Honestly, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of difference. This is maybe just a pinch warmer than this side, but I really am not seeing that much difference. Like even on my hand, this just looks like a translucent powder next to this translucent powder. I don't really think there's a ton of coverage where you would need to get more than one powder. Um, so I would say if you have the translucent or you have the peach, you would be fine, you wouldn't need both. That's just my opinion. Let me show you how it looks closer up. Okay, so I do not have any other face products, so let me finish up my face and eyes and I'll be back to show you liner, mascara, brows, and lips. Okay guys, I am back. I added some eyeshadow. I'm trying out the Hard Candy Pro Rose Gold Palette today, so that's what's on my eyes. So let's finish off the face with the rest of the Joa products that we have left. Um, my lips are just looking a little dead right now, so I want to get some lip products on like ASAP. So we have the Wada Matte, Matte Liquid Lipstick and we have the Infinite Kiss Satin Liquid Lipstick. And right now I think I'm going a little bit more pink than I am kind of like rosy corally shade. So I'm going to go with this one, but let me just see what this one looks like, what it smells like. No detectable fragrance that I can tell. Well, that's pretty. It reminds me of the NYX, what were they called? Soft Matte Lip Creams. This texture reminds me of the Soft Matte Lip Cream from NYX. All right, and then let's try it. this one. It smells like paint. We just painted our entire dining room, so I know what that smells like. And it looks like just like a lighter, ooh, that might be too light for me. Lighter bubblegum type pink, but we will try it. Definitely smells like paint. So I'm gonna say patchy emphasizes all of the imperfections in your lips. Like my lips are a little bit on the dry side right now. Ooh. Not liking this color. I'm not loving the formula. So I'm actually gonna remove this and try the other one. Okay, let's try the satin liquid lipstick now. Now this one is much more comfortable, much more wearable. Again, I didn't do the best job with picking a shade. This looks like a deep shade in the tube on my lips. It looks more like, like a muted coral, um, rosy coral. So these two together, not so much, but of the two lip products, I definitely prefer this one. Much more comfortable, much more forgiving, and much more opaque. So of the two, I would get the cute one with the bow not the one that looks like a cupcake liner. So that's just my personal, personal opinion. And again, still no detectable fragrance or taste that I can tell, so pretty good. All right, next up, let's do these brows. We have the Brow Down To Me Brow Pencil and Gel, and I have the shade Taupe. Oh, okay, it's thicker than I thought. I love this packaging, it's so cute. All right, so it looks like we have the Brow Pencil with the Teardrop Triangle Tip on the one side and on the other we have a nice brow gel so let's see what the brow gel looks like okay i like that if i'm going to the gym i would just put brow gel in and be out the door but if i want to really take the time to do my brows i would do both sides but just so you know this this is the color right here. It's a good, I would say this is like a light brown more than a taupe, but it's all right. This is all I do to my brows and then I'm out the door. 
it is a little darker than I would have expected taupe to be. To me, this looks more like a cool brown on my skin. Um, so when my hair is this color in the summer, it's a little too dark, but I can make it work. I think they had a shade lighter, which was like warm blonde, which I thought would be a bit too warm for me, but maybe I'll check that one out. But this tip keeps falling out. Woo! And there it goes. Okay, so the brows are semi-even. They're never completely the same, let's be honest. All right, now let's jump over to the eyeliner and the mascara. All right, so we have the I'm So Fly liner in black. This one says felt tip liquid black eyeliner. Spread your wings with our felt tip liquid eyeliner for an easy application, creating the most precise looks to always stay fly. Shake well before use. I like it, you'll like it. That is their slogan. Looks like this. Ooh, inky black, yes. Those are the easiest little wings I've ever done. Wow. I love how easily this draws over shadow. Like it doesn't get thinned out by the shadow. It just draws right over it. It's inky black. Super easy to apply. This is one of the best felt eyeliners I have ever used, honestly. So easy, so black. It just glides over the lids. No problem. This is amazing. Definitely, definitely pick up this if you guys pass the display. Definitely get this one. And finally, we have the mascara. I picked up the one for volume and length because that's what I look for in a mascara. I don't really look for curl so much. My nut lashes are somewhat naturally curly. Um, so, it says, I screen, you screen volume and length. It, it, achieve long, luscious lashes that will create that luxurious false lash effect. Can I just reiterate how much I love this packaging? The gold, the pastels, it really feels like I'm going to like a macaroon shop in Paris. Just gives me that, I don't know, just takes me back to like a Paris feel even though this is Korean inspired. The packaging I definitely think is more like French inspired. But that's just me. So adorable packaging, let's see what the wand looks like. Oh. Is this a fiber mascara? Can you guys see this? You guys see all the little fibers shooting off of this wand? Okay. All right, well this makes me a little nervous, but we will give it a try. I always do the top of my lids or lashes first. All right, so there's one layer. I think that it definitely defined, but I don't think it gave me more volume or more length yet. So let's try a second coat. And I'm trying to decide if this is a fiber mascara because it looks an awful lot like fibers. Otherwise it just has a ton of hair in it. Like I just pulled off what I think is a fiber. Let's keep trying, one more layer. So I think this is a fiber mascara even though it's not advertised as one because I have little tiny fibers on the tips of my lashes, which are making my lashes look longer. So that's where they give you the length. 
But as far as volume, I don't think this is giving me more volume. I think it's actually making my lashes kind of clump together to look thicker. So it's not giving me volume, it is giving me length. But I feel like I've lost some of my lashes because like three or four is combined into one. Let's try the bottom. Okay, so for the lower lash line, it's just a mess. It's getting all over the place. Like, can you see just how speckled my under eye is from the bottom lashes? Okay, so let me show you a close up of the top lash line. So I like that they gave me length. I just wish that I had more of the volume that I had beforehand. So it's kind of reminded me of like clown lashes where like you've got like one here, one here, one here, and one here with like a gem at the end of them. That's what it reminds me of. I know that's a strange reference. Um, I think I would like this on top of one of my volumizing mascaras. So like if I were to use my L'Oreal Lash Paradise and then apply a layer of this once they're already separated to kind of extend the lashes further. I think that might be a nice combination, um, but on its own, it doesn't give me enough of the volume that I look for in a mascara for me to use it by itself. So in conjunction with something else, I'm definitely game for trying this, but by itself, not so much. So let me give you the rundown of my thoughts on these products. There's already three that I know I'm not keeping. The what a matte, matte liquid lipstick. I just didn't care for the formula, didn't care for the color. So this is just a pass for me. It's going to be going back to CVS. And after doing a flash test, the translucent powder flashed back so bad, I cannot see using this. Um, and then the peach one, while not as bad, it still made my face too bright, especially in flash photography. So it's not a powder that I can see wearing every day. And for that purpose, I will not use it much. So these will be passes for me and we'll be going back to CVS. So not things that I would recommend. Um, things that I am really liking right now are the eyeliner and the formula of this uh, satin liquid lipstick. These I would definitely suggest. This is nice and smooth, it's not settling into lines, it's very comfortable, very opaque. I like this color just not so much with this this look right now so I would definitely recommend both the fly liner and this lip product these are really nice and then ones that I'm kind of on the fence about the foundation while it's nice it's already settling into my smile lines definitely creased on my forehead which I don't love but a lot of foundations will do that now that I am getting older and older it seems to be happening more and more um, the concealer just okay, I don't really feel like it covered the dark circles even though it's called a dark circle concealer. Um, so I'm gonna continue to play with this one. The, the eyebrow pencil and gel, it did a nice job. I just feel like it's a little bit darker than advertised. I don't think of this as a taupe. I think of this as like maybe a light brown. But as, as the weather gets cooler and my hair goes back to its natural kind of light brown, dark blonde color, this will be perfect for it. And I do like that it's two in one, very convenient for travel. So I do like this. I should add this to my do like pile. And then finally, the mascara. Um, this is with and this is without. I do not recommend it on the lower lash line. It was a mess. But on the top lash line, if you have very full lashes already and you just want them to be longer, this does a really nice job of really extending the length of your lashes. So while it is called the volume and lengthening mascara, I feel like it should just be called the lengthening mascara because that's really what it does. It doesn't really add volume. They kind of stick together, but they look longer together, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of first impressions of this new line at the drugstore. I am so excited to check out more from this brand as they release more. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.